Is it on? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi, everybody. It's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Back for video number 10. One day later, 24 hours, and here I am. Can't get enough, right? Um, tonight, just for giggles, um, I have a bunch of these little 9-inch MDF boards lying around. Put tape on the back. And... Um, you can make relatively inexpensive little clocks. I typically don't sell them um, too much anymore, um, but they make for fun gifts. And um, I'll talk a little about a little bit about where I get my hardware for these. Um, so no big pour tonight, just a little clock. Um, so and I wanted to finally show my axle mixing um, with my pouring medium. And um, so you guys can see it, because usually I do that part ahead of time and then don't start filming until uh, it's already pre-made. So tonight you get to see the full process, but since it's just a one cup little pour, um, it should go pretty quick, so 20 minutes or so. I don't know why I worry about the time. I mean, if you guys don't like it, fast forward, right? I'm insane. Anyway, um, let me get the uh, camera down and get started. There's my little MDF. Get a little more. There we go. So colors for tonight, um, just just three plus my T white. So I'm using uh, my favorite brand. I think is Winsor Newton um, Permanent Magenta, dark and uh, just rich looking color. Um, the dark color is the. I think these are new because I've never seen them before. I got these at Dick Blick's, again, in New York City. Um, but they had a whole, uh, they had six or eight new colors out that were all muted. So this one is muted uh, violet. Um, and it looks really rich and pretty in my cup. So, um, of course, I had to buy like three or four of them. And then finally, um, just some light magenta. Um, so sticking with the same color scheme. And then tea white. My pouring medium for tonight is, I just made up a my big container full, um, is one cup of Floetrol, one cup of Elmer's Glue Wall, three ounces of Liquitex pouring medium, and two ounces of water. I didn't add varnish tonight, only because I couldn't find it. So uh, that's it. I have a little bit left in my measuring cup that I'm going to kill off. Um, so I've already poured my colors and I finally get to use my little glass jar since I'm doing a smaller pour. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you about how much I add. So that's less than an ounce of paint. I don't measure anymore. I eyeball this obviously. Um, and these little cups are really handy that you get at the grocery store because it tells you by ounces or by teaspoons, how much you have. So 0.5 is there. So it's like a quarter of an ounce of paint for the uh, light magenta, maybe about an ounce, if that, probably a little less of the uh, permanent magenta. And this is heavy body, so it looks less, but I know from experience that when I add my pouring medium and a dash of water, um, I'm gonna need a little more water just to even out the uh, consistency from the other two that are medium body. So um, that's why there's less than that one. So normally, so again, I just eyeball these, um, usually just enough to cover as my starting point. Oh, I have the most of white. Probably, there is probably a true ounce of, of tea white in my little measuring cup. Cover that up. And then cover up the heavy body. I've seen the heavy body one. I added and now covered up, it's at one and a half ounces. So about an ounce of paint, half an ounce of PM. I'm gonna give that a stir, I've got my cup of water. I don't use distilled water, I just use tap water because I tried it and I didn't see a difference. And again, I can be lazy. So, but I mean, I tried it a bunch of times with the distilled water and I was like why what does this do and I never could get a really good ex, ex, um, 
explanation, so I gave up. So mixed it with my PM. Usually I can tell, and this is something you guys will just have to figure out as you practice. You can tell um, how thick it is by the drag on your stick. So as I'm stirring it, I can tell it's still heavy, it's still thick, it's still very much a big clump. I could put my stick in there straight up if I wanted to. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna add, because this is the heavy body, a dash more of the PM and then just a thin coat to cover the top. Give that a stir. Well, it's all in nice. Ooh, that's that muted. What is this called again? The muted violet. Really, really pretty color. Um, maybe they're not new, maybe just new to me, but I know I know for sure the local uh, craft stores, the Michaels and the AC Moore and everything around my house, Hobby Lobby, do not carry the muted color. So they're either brand new or it's because I was in a real art store. Still kind of thick, so I'm gonna add some water. Probably just enough to uh, skim the top of this till it's completely covered just enough to skim the top that's about it that's how i kind of eyeball it and immediately i can tell by the drag on my stick that that's feeling much better it's going to flow better and then i think i talked about in our previous videos about the trace on my stick so i like to keep my stick clean do this in my trace uh, maybe i'll use it on a lighter color when, I, when it pours off, how, how many seconds, how long is it lasting on top of the paint in the cup before it dissipates? I want this kind of thin, so I don't want to see any trace. I want it to pour right back into the paint, which it's doing. So this one's pretty good. So I put that aside. Now the next one, see this is interesting, because I purposely chose three different brands to show you guys um, that you do have to futz with the consistency. So now I have the Artist Loft, the Light Magenta, which is already easier to stir than the Heavy Body. Immediately um, soaked up my pouring medium. Um, still thick enough though that my stick will stand. Maybe a little bit white on the side. Let me get all that. And mix that up still much too thick. I'm not gonna add any more pouring medium to it. I think it had enough. I think this just calls for a dash of water, just enough to cover the top. And because I'm a goober, I like to stick my stick in the hole that it leaves. <laughs> I don't know why, it's so weird. I'm one of those people that if I'm at the gas station and you know my tank is full and it's either $49.99 or 15 gallons. I stand there and agonize what to do. <laughs> like, do I make it $50 or leave it at exactly 15 gallons? That's so funny. I will also drive around on E. Kind of like Kramer used to do in the old Seinfeld show. Like I will try to go for miles on E. Another little dash of water, still feeling kind of thick. Um, I think my record for driving on E with uh, my car, I have a Ford Edge. And so it'll say, you're on zero miles. And one time it said that and I drove 13 more miles. And then until a friend was freaking out and made me pull into a gas station. So I'm always convinced there's an extra hidden gallon of gas in there. So this one, hopefully you can see the trace a little better the color. Oh, let me grab some paint. Or a clean stick. Clean stick always helps. Go like this. There's a whole, not a whole lot of paint. But when it's hitting the paint in, in my cup, uh, it's disappearing. So that's pretty much the way I want it. So I got the consistency to match um, the heavy, the same consistency that the heavy body was. Next one. What do we got? Uh, the Artist Loft, the Light Magenta. This should be pretty much similar to the uh, Windsor Newton. 
Oh my. I might have a bad batch here. I might have to switch covers. It's a total lumpy mess. And you know what? I just opened this. This is brand new. Brand new bottle. So you know what? Rather than not waste your time while I play with this, I won't throw this away. I will stir the hell out of this and leave it sit overnight until the lumps come out. But let me put that to the side and grab um, a different uh, light magenta color. I think I have something here. Huh, see I opened a new one and I had an old one. Let me grab a cup. All right, see if we're back in business. That was weird, see if this one's any better. Just about that much paint. Not very much at all, that's less than an ounce. Add my pouring medium till I get to about an ounce and a half. That's pretty good. Give this a stir and see what happens. Oh, much better. Anyway, so this should be very similar in consistency to the uh, Windsor & Newton. Even though I find Windsor & Newton less stinky, I find Artist Loft's pretty stinky. Um, and Windsor & Newton's a little more creamy. Seems more creamy to me. So it's nice and creamy. Obviously still too thick. Same deal. Just enough water to cover the top. Stick my stick in the hole. I wonder if I'm secretly OCD. I don't think so. But I do have my quirks, like we all do. All right. Let's see how this is. Clean stick. Nice consistency. So all my consistencies for my three brands are all very, very similar. Still got the same nice thing. Nice color combination. Mix up a little bit of white. Real quick. Did I tell you guys, as now I was talking uh, last night in my video, how I am um, pretty happy I scored a nice place to live my move to New York City and if you haven't seen my other videos I'm about to move um, in about four more weeks and uh, here's the freaky part so my office has about 80 85 people in it and there must be tens of thousands of apartments in New York City I happen to rent the woman I'm replacing her apartment Without, every talk, without ever talking to her or meeting her or anything. I found that out today and I was just like, what? Isn't that random? Kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies of all the apartments. All right, my white's looking pretty good. Maybe just a drop or two more of water. Not enough to even cover. That was like two drops. And then again, same consistency. All right, so I'm gonna put, these are, this is very little paint. So I'm gonna use my uh, treadmill silicone. I'm gonna put a drop. I'm gonna put two in the dark one, just for the hell of it. And one in the other two. And that's it. Quick little stir three or four times around. That's about it. And my white. And I think we're ready to go. Let me check on this other pink. Still a lumpy mess. It looks like pink oatmeal. It's totally bizarre. I should take that tube back to Michael's. Um, let me get a cup or at least empty. Oh, I got a clean cup here for pour. 
I think I used up all my jars, or I would use this to pour. I'm going to put this up here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, it's going to start off with my white sandwich. A little bit of white on the bottom. The other thing I did was each color tonight um, is a different opacity. So my muted violet is opaque. My light magenta, I believe this is semi, semi-opaque. And then my permanent magenta is uh, transparent. So I wanna give that some thought. So white is always opaque, so that's pretty heavy. So if I want cells to come through or bleed through or have those nice rings that has a color within a color, which is what I always aim for, there are cells and then there are cells. And everyone says, you know, I can get cells with just paint and water. Well, yeah, of course you can, but you're not gonna get the same quality of cells. And I think if we all um, practice this art form, I know for me personally, I'm always trying to improve upon previous work. So that's what I look for, is improving the quality um, of the cells and, and how my fluid uh, acrylic paints paintings look. So that's, that's what I do. That's what I'm striving for in all these wacky experiments. So opaque. So I'm gonna go next with my transparent. Um, wait, before I get confused, make sure I got the right one, yep. So I'm gonna go with my permanent magenta next. And I'm gonna layer that on top of my white. A little bit, looking good. I'm going to take my, my next opaque or semi-opaque, which is the uh, light magenta. No, I'm sorry, the permanent magenta and go next with that one. And then go with the light. And I'm just gonna rotate those three pretty much in that order. And I'm gonna sandwich white in between. I lost it. Oh, I did a little, um, a little pull on uh, the um, Pouring Acrylics Facebook page, and I've decided to keep this clock. So for everyone, if you guys are watching and you, can you see that? Chimed in, um, that's what I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about where I get my hands. This piece, um, this is the same thing, MDF board with the hardware and I get my hardware um, from wish.com, which is basically coming from China. Um, so it takes a good week, I'm not gonna lie, but it's dirt cheap. Sometimes the hands might be a little bent, but they straighten out and I like them because you can clip them to size. And they have a great selection of uh, colors um, and styles to choose from, so that makes it nice. So usually I will pour, let it cure for a couple weeks. And then uh, once it's good and dry, I do a barrier coat, usually the mini wax polyacrylics. Um, and I'll put two coats and let it sit and dry um, a bit more. And then that clock I just showed you, that has been uh, resined. And that has, I think that just has a single coat of resin on it, just for the shine. And this is gonna be the last little bit. End of my white. And just because I'm really partial, I don't know, just splooge my hands. I'm really partial to uh, this. Oh, did you hear that? that wow, well, it's my cat on the porch fighting with another cat. But it's gonna have to wait. Uh, one second. I apologize. Bella? Oh. Sorry about that. My cat just came flying in the door. So I ended it with the, uh, the, um, muted 
can't even remember his name, Muted Violet. So I'm gonna stop there. And I'm not even gonna give it a stir. I'm just gonna flip cup it. So tape on the back. Always keep the little price tape thingy on it. Can you see that? It makes it handy to hold. Put that on. This cup is awfully high, isn't it? Can you guys see that okay? Let me find something else. Let me do this. Put this down lower. Hopefully, is that better? No? How about that? Somewhere in a happy medium, that looks better. All right, give that a second. I'm gonna put it up here. And, oh, gloves, whoa, don't fall. Got some gloves on. I'm trying to think of any handy tips to give you guys tonight. I don't know what was going on with, with grocery stores and targets, but they were all out of like the little Dixie cups. And I was forced to buy um, some other like coffee cups, these guys, um, but they came with lids. So if you're forced to use like another type of cup or you don't have the glass, the lids make for really good little stands to put your paints on. So that's a really cheesy hint, but hey, it's all I got tonight. All right, ready? I'm gonna tilt it, drag it, whoa. And that was a little too fast there. Tripping off. Come up here. Not gonna torch. I don't want that to come off. I don't want you to come off either. Stay, stay where I tell you to stay. I'm very bossy with my paints. I like to boss them around, tell them what to do. Come down here. Try not to lose those nice pretty cells. Do my edges so it looks pretty. And then come back a little bit just to help retain the shape of those cells in the middle. These are kind of pretty. Put this down here. Honest to God, I could leave it like that and be happy with just those colors and a pretty background, just like that. Um, as I stare at it, that was pretty much the perfect amount of paint. Um, just a tiny bit left in my cup, very, very little. Uh, so, a nine inch diameter MDF board with maybe, let's see, count one, two, three and a half ounces of paint. Um, should do the trick to cover nicely without having a lot left over. Letting that sit, I'm gonna grab my torch. Check my sides. There's a little dab right there. How's it looking on your end? There's a splotch of white there that I think if I torch, I'm gonna to get white to come through. Same thing with right here. Go right there, see? You can see them. You can get some bigger ones there if I want. I'm gonna see if I get some magenta to come up here. Right in there. And then maybe some here on the, whoa. I think I'll probably just pop some more bubbles. I should have started with that. I'm going to try and keep that middle part clear. I don't care if it's busy around the edge. That's so pretty. I like to be able to see it. I'm going to go here on the edges a little bit then. 
the cake. And some right in there. What do I like? What do I not like? I don't like this edge. So I'm just gonna go. Where's my little thing to hold on to? I'm just gonna pour that off a little bit right there. Come on off and then come back. Keep those, the shape of those cells. And put it there. That's a, that's gonna be a cute little clock. Right there. Um, again, wish.com for clock parts. Um, if you decide to resin, um, use a barrier coat of some sort. If you have oil, I mean, I'll have to wipe this down um, gently with some Dawn um, dishwash and pat it dry and everything before I even put the uh, mini wax polyacrylic. Um, but unless you're not going to use oil or hair serum or whatever it is, your whatever your preference is, um, I find it's always best to have a barrier coat with the before you put down the resin. It just makes your life a lot easier. Um, saves you from the pinning and having to sand and put down a second coat, etc. So. Um, let me try again to zoom in. This is where I always screw up my videos. I know. Try it one last time. In case, oh wait, ta-da! Because I can't forget that part, right? Um, let me see. Yay, there I am. Okay, so let me come down on here and you guys can take a quick look, a close up at the little purple clock. Kind of pretty. Can be a little closer without losing it. It's small, so there's not a whole lot to uh, move around in. But that's what she looks like. Quick and easy little painting. Good for the soul. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.